Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can filter in Microsoft Excel. We're gonna start off with the basics of filtering, then we're gonna jump into more advanced filtering, and then for fun at the end, we're gonna finish off with a brand new function that's coming out called none other than the filter function. If you watch this entire video from end to end, you will be a master at filtering in Microsoft Excel. And as full disclosure, before we jump into this, my HR department requires me to say it, I work at Microsoft as a full-time employee. And also today I'm using the latest and greatest version of Microsoft Excel that comes with Microsoft 365. If you happen to be using an older version of Excel, you should be able to follow along for most of it. Or if you're using Excel on the web, you could follow along with all of this. All right, well, why don't we get to it and learn how to filter? Here I am on my PC and I have some sample data up that we are going to filter. Now, if you wanna follow along, what you could do is I have a link in the description to the sample data. So you could load that up in your version of Excel and then you could follow along with me. Now today, what I've done is I've set up a fictional company called the Kevin's Cookie Company. You know, I figured if I'm gonna set up a fictional company, I might as well do it on something that I'm passionate about and I really love cookies. So I figured that'd be a good way to go. Now, just to orient you to the data that we have here on the sheet, uh, we have store numbers. So for my cookie company, we have 15 different locations. They're located in a variety of different states, and then they have a certain amount of revenue. They have certain expenses, and then we could see the profit. So this is just the revenue minus the expenses. That's how much the store made. And as you can see, some locations are profitable and some locations have lost money. That's not a great thing. I thought the Kevin's Cookie Company was just a successful enterprise, but unfortunately we do have some losers in the set. And then lastly, the last column of data, I could also see when the location was opened and what year it opened in. Now, to even get started with filtering, I wanna show two different ways you could start filtering your data. One of them is you wanna set up your data so it's in a table. So how do we get a table? Well, what we could do is if we go up to the top bar here and we click on the insert pivot, there's an option to turn this into a table. Now what you can see as I'm hovering over, you also see that the shortcut key is Control T. If you press Control T, that will also turn this data into a table. So let me just go ahead and click on this button. And I get this prompt here that says, where is the data for your table? Well, since I had my selection within the area of the table, Excel assumes that this is my table and it assumed correctly. Also, when I look at this, my table has headers, store number, state, revenue, expenses, profit, lot. These are all my headers here. So I'm gonna check that box and I'm gonna click on okay. Now this turns my data into a table and you'll see here that I have these drop down icons that appear. These are different, this is how I can apply filtering to my data. Now I'm gonna go back for a moment because I said I would show two different ways to filter my data. The other way I can do it is I go to the data pivot up on top on the ribbon in Excel. And then within here, if I go over to the sort and filter category, I see an option for filtering. And once again, as I hover over, you can see what the shortcut key is. It's control shift L. And this will also allow me to filter my data. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's click on filter here. And just like with a table, you'll see these similar icons here that allow me to filter. Now you could either use a table or you could simply insert these filter dropdowns, whatever you prefer but either way will allow you to filter your data. So now that I have these dropdowns, what kind of things can I do with filtering? Well, let's say that for the Kevin Cookie Company, you know, I'm originally from New Jersey, so I'm really interested in seeing how my New Jersey locations are performing. So how do I filter down? You know, here, if I look at this list of states, I have Connecticut, you know, there's New Jersey mixed in, New York, Pennsylvania. How do I just see New Jersey? Well, if I click on this drop down for state, what you'll see here is I have different options. I could sort, I could sort by color, I could also apply text filters, or down here I have a list of all the unique values that appear under state. So what right now by default it's set to select all. Let me uncheck that and I could go down and select just New Jersey. So now if I click on okay, 
What it's done is it has filtered my list down to just New Jersey and so I could look at just those locations. Let me go back and turn off the filter here. If I wanna turn it off, I click on the filter icon and I go to clear filter from state and that'll return it back to the original state. Now, if I click on this drop down again, what I could also do is instead of looking at this list and trying to find New Jersey in the list, I also have this search field. So I could type in New Jersey and then I'm gonna go ahead and search. And if I click on OK, here too, it's filtered. What I wanna show now is what if I wanted to do New Jersey and New York? Well, here I could go to the list and I could click it, or I could use search again, and I could search for New York, and I could add current selection to filter. So now it's both New Jersey and New York. So kind of a very quick way how I can filter my data. Now what I wanna also show, I'm gonna turn off the filter here and I'm gonna click back on this drop down. What's interesting is not only can I select items here, not only can I search for items, but you'll also see this option that says text filters. Let me click on that and I'll show you how you could filter based on text using Excel. So here within the sub menu, you could search for text that equals something, does not equal something, begins with, ends with, contains. So you have lots of power over how you filter for text. So let's say I wanted to look at all states that start with an N. I could say begins with, and then I could type in an N and I'll click on OK, and this will give me New York and New Jersey. So another way where I could filter based on text. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead, let's clear this filter from here. Now, one of the things that I can also do is not only can I filter based on text, but I can also filter based on color. So let's say that you know I have different store managers and let's say I talk to the store managers for location one, location five, and then maybe 14 or 15. So I'm gonna highlight all those colors but because I had a conversation with those store managers and maybe I wanna follow up with them on how they're performing. So let's say that I just wanna view these locations that I highlighted. What I'm gonna do is I'll click on this drop down, and then I could go down to filter by color and here I could filter by yellow, the color I just highlighted with and there you'll see my selection. Now I could highlight any color and I could apply filters based on any colors I want. It's not just limited to yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's go back and I'm gonna remove the colors from those cells. So that's some very basic filtering just based on colors, based on text. What if I wanna filter based on numbers? So I'm looking here at my sheet and you know here I see some good signs of progress where I'm making some nice money, almost a little over half a million dollars, but then I lose all that money in my next location where I lost over half a million dollars. So what I could do is when I click on this filter, what I can do is I can filter it down to just the locations that have lost money. So maybe I need to follow up with these locations, maybe give some additional training, or maybe I even consider closing some of these locations since they seem to be losing money. And some of these have been open for a while. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the filter again, and we have a section here called number filters. And within number filters, what I can do is I here I could do it equals something, it does not equal, greater than, less than, I could do top 10, above average, below average, so there are lots of different filters I can apply. Now I wanna look at just stores that have lost money, so what I wanna do is I wanna do less than or equal to, and I'll just say zero. Click on OK, and now this will filter down the view to all of my locations that have lost money. So once again, maybe I might wanna follow up with the manager here and figure out what's going on. This one opened in here 2020, so okay, makes sense that maybe it's lost money, but these other locations, no excuses. One thing I could do, I'm gonna turn off the filter and I'm gonna click back on profit loss and I'm gonna go back to number filters. A very interesting one is top 10. So I'm gonna click on top 10. And what you could do here is not only can you look at the top locations, you could also look at the bottom locations. So here, maybe I wanna just look at the bottom three locations across all states. I could look at the bottom three items just the bottom absolute three, or you could even say, hey, I wanna see the bottom 10% or the bottom 20%. So you have some uh, power here in terms of how you view your data. I'm gonna look at the bottom three items. And these three locations have lost the most amount of money. So these are definitely ones that I probably wanna follow up with. I'm gonna turn off the filter on profit loss and now I also wanna show you how you could filter based on date. So I'm gonna click over here and here for dates here too, I get a specific thing called date filters and I have lots of different preset options in here. So I could say before this date, after this date, between these dates. So I could do lots of different things, but let's say that I just wanna look at stores opened, let's say last year. So I'm gonna scroll down the list and you'll see that it starts from just days to weeks to months to quarters and then years. And so I 
I could click on last year, and here I had two locations that opened last year. So quick way just to filter down to that. What I can also do here, I'm gonna go back to date filters and I could even say after, let's say I wanna see locations maybe opened after, let's say 2010, I could go ahead, filter that, and here are all my locations that opened after 2010. With filters, what I've shown so far is how you filter individual columns on their own, but you can also apply multiple filters at the same time. The one way to say it is filters are additive. And so what I mean by that is, let's say I wanna see all locations in New Jersey that were opened in 2010. So what I could do here, I'm gonna click on the state column and I'm gonna filter based on New Jersey. So let's go ahead and filter down to New Jersey. And then I'm gonna click on this year opened and I am going to just select 2010 and I had one location in New Jersey that opened in 2010. This, this shows how I can filter multiple items at once. I filtered both the state and I also filtered the year open. So you can apply as many filters as you want as you're going through this. As you remove filters, you can rem remove it from one column and then I could go back here and I could remove it to another column to get me back to where I was. Alternatively, what you could do is, let's say you wanna remove all filters. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the data pivot here and then I could go up to clear and that will also turn off all of the filters. Another way to turn off filters, let's say I have it filtered down to two different states. What I can also do is if I simply turn off filter there, that will also effectively turn off my filter. All right, well, congratulations. You now know how to do basic filtering in Microsoft Excel. So why don't we get a little more advanced if you feel up to it and if you feel brave enough, we're gonna jump on to the next sheet called advanced filtering. So let's jump in here. It's the same exact data that I had on the previous sheet, but now I wanna show some fancy advanced functionality. What I wanna do here, let's say that I have a list of store numbers. So I have this list of store numbers, one, five, 13, and 15. What if I wanna filter my data just to these numbers? Well, we just learned in our basic filtering here, if I go up to the filter option here, I'm gonna turn on the filter. What I could do is I could go through and say, well, I want five, I want 13, you know, five, I want 13, I want 15. But let's say I had a massive list, that would take too long. And this is the advanced sheet. So how do we make this even easier? Well, what I'm gonna do is there's an option up here by filtering called advanced. That sounds promising. Let's click on that. And so if I click on advanced now, What's interesting is it'll ask me what is my list range. Well, this is the list range is the data you want to filter. So Excel is smart and it automatically selects the data that I'm looking for, that I'm looking at, or my list range. And now it has something called the criteria range. Well, my criteria is over here. Now, one thing to call out before I do this for the criteria range, the header of the criteria range has to match one of the headers of your list range. In this case, I have the store number header in my criteria range and it matches this store number header over here in my list range. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna select all these store numbers and now I'm gonna click on OK. And what you'll see happened is it filtered down to store one, five, 13, and 15. It was all the same numbers that I had in this advanced range over here. Now if I click on clear, this now will remove the filtering again and I'm back to where I started from. What you can do is here in this example, I simply showed how you can do advanced filtering based on one column, but you could have two columns or three columns, any number of columns, and you could use that as your criteria range. The one thing to keep in mind is that the column header here in the criteria range has to match the column headers of the list range. That is advanced filtering. Now we're gonna jump on to the final part of this, which is the new filter function. So I'm gonna jump into the filter function worksheet. And here, once again, you'll see similar data to what we looked at before in basic and advanced. Now let's say that I wanna very quickly be able to see this view filtered by state, but I don't wanna go through, I don't wanna add the filtering column. Maybe I just wanna enter the value right here and then I want my table to be filtered by it. Well, with the filter filter function, I can do that. So let me show you how you can use the filter function. And to do that, I'm gonna go up here to insert function. So I'm gonna click on this and now I'm gonna search for a filter. This is a new function that's available to Microsoft 365 customers. If you're not a Microsoft 365 customer, unfortunately you won't be able to take advantage of this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, let's insert this function. 
And I'm gonna walk through exactly what we're going to insert here. So once again, I said I wanna filter my data based on the state that I have entered in this cell. So what I'm gonna do is it asks for the array. Well, the array is my data set, and so I'm gonna go ahead and select this array of data. And in this case, I did not select the column headers. Next, it's asking me what I want to include. What this is, is it's gonna look at my data and it's gonna make a determination of true or false. And so basically what it is, is what is the data that I'm filtering on? So I'm gonna select this column, this is the column I'm filtering on, and then I want it to look for a New Jersey. So I'm gonna put in an equal sign and I'm gonna go ahead and select this cell reference, I1. I could also simply, if I wanted to, I could also type in New Jersey, but in this case, I wanna insert a cell reference. And if it's empty, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert quotes and I'm just gonna enter two quotes. So basically returns an empty string. And now I'm gonna click on OK. And what this has done now is it filtered my data based on New Jersey. Now the neat thing about using the filter function is let's say I change this to New York, it'll automatically update my table or maybe Connecticut, there it'll automatically update my table. You get the idea, it's a very quick way to filter the data. And here if I enter, let's say California where I have no locations, it'll return the empty string that I entered in and I'll just bring back New Jersey. All right, well, this was a tutorial of how to do filtering in Microsoft Excel. We started out with basic filtering, then we touched on some advanced filtering, and then we finished off with the new filter function, which is currently rolling out to Microsoft 365 customers. If you learned how to filter your data and you feel more confident about filtering your data, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other video topics in the future, leave a comment down below. I read them all and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Bye.